Hi, my name is Maggie Cahill. I'm Mike Macaluso. I'm Father Joe Carey, and we want to welcome you to <laughs> the, the Cup, Cup of, of Joe. Joe and LaCroix. And LaCroix, <laughs> an ace staple. So, Mike, uh, we're really excited to have you as a guest here today, and um, I wanted to bring up something about the importance of books. Wait, but before we get to that, can I just say, so it's been a while since I've been been on the show, but I, I mean, we're getting up to, uh, this might be either my fourth or fifth time. Okay. And then, you know, on Saturday Night Live, whenever a ghost, or a host, not a ghost, <laughs> When a host comes back for the fifth time, they get like a special jacket, like a, they're inducted into a special club. So, I, I mean, I'm, I'm wondering what's the special thing I'm going to get here at some point. As a, we'll get you another LaCroix. <laughs> as a five timer here. So right, yeah, we got to go back. We got to go back and count and see how many it's been. But all right, yeah. good. I'll, I'll look forward to that. Or oh. a special mug, a five timer mug, maybe. Oh, OK. We'll, OK. All right. All right. Five timer. Uh, like, <laughs> All right, sorry I interrupted you. Go ahead. Okay, so, you know, you're all about books, but I was thinking about books the other day because I saw a person who had gone to Notre Dame, and I've known him for so many years, and I, he was always the smartest person I ever knew. Wow. And the reason why, he, so I asked him, why, what, how, what happened when you were growing up? And he said, well, you know, we didn't have a TV in our house. Mm. And therefore, uh, I said, well, what would you do? We read. We read all the time wow. when most people would be watching TV. And so I was thinking, you're an authority on a lot of books. And it's you true. pick out right. books that are uh, given awards and everything. Tell us the beauty of books. Oh my goodness, that is like an epic question here, the, the beauty of books. Uh, you know, I think there's there's different ways to think about it. And I think, you know, to the point of your friend here, I think sometimes we think about the sort of the information that we get from books, right? But I think there's a lot of learning that can happen, even if it's not in the strict sort of informational sense of just kind of thinking about, you know, how is an experience different from my own? What can I learn from this book that maybe I couldn't learn from my immediate context or just from going outside my house? So I think, you know, expanding that idea of what learning could mean of not just like getting information, but also just like learning in terms of how the world works that's similar or different from how I experience the world or how mm -hmm. I think about things. What would you, I mean, what do you think as a, as an English teacher? What's, what's your take on that? Yeah, I agree. I think it can open up worlds that you didn't realize were possible. Mm -hmm. And I think it can get you to think about things in a way that you hadn't before. I think sometimes you think about those worlds as like fantastical worlds, but it doesn't have to be, right? right it could be no. like, what is someone else's world that's kind of right. similar or different than my own? What's it like to live in this part of the country versus that part of the country yeah. or in a different country? Yeah. So. What, what's a, uh, a book that stands out in each of your minds that you've read in your life? Oh my goodness, my whole life? Mm. Do you want it to come to that? My answer is always man's search for meaning mm. because that was a sign to me my junior year of college which was when COVID hit and so we started it before and then I had to finish it at home during COVID and that was a very appropriate book mm. for that time. You know I've never read that book but I obviously have known about it and then I forgot who I was talking to but someone just recommended it to me so now I feel like maybe this is my sign that I need to pick it up because it's part so. about the Holocaust his experiences with the Holocaust mm -hmm. what he saw but then like what does Victor Frankl is yeah. the author? Because he also then became um, a philosopher or a psychologist. I think a psychologist. Um, the people out there would probably know better than me. But he has this whole um, theory that he developed oh. based on his time in the concentration camp. Because I think that's how it was recommended to me. It's sort of like, well, how do I live in a world now when I've experienced what mm -hmm. I've experienced, seen what I've seen? And so what is my sort of purpose and meaning in this world outside of that? Is I don't know if that is that right? What do you, it is. Okay. Yeah. It's like, how do I find meaning in mm. my everyday when I have no idea if this is going to be my last day? Gotcha. So 
So. So what's your favorite book? Oh man, I don't. I can never answer this question in terms of like my life or my favorite book. I always think about it in the context of like what I've read recently. Yeah. Um. And so I just finished, and I did audio for it, so it was like all audio. Um. But it it's very recent. It's being nominated for a bunch of awards, but it's called Demon Copperhead. It's by Barbara Kingsolver, who's a very famous author right now. Um. But it's basically she took. Uh, David Copperfield, Demon Copperhead. So she mm-hmm. took David Copperfield, Charles Dickens, Victorian England, and did it for the United States today for um, this boy growing up in uh, sort of like rural rural West Virginia, I think, and Tennessee and just sort of like the Appalachian area and sort of what is what has his life been as the result of um, being around like sort of institutional poverty, um, you know, sort of the the opioid epi- epidemic and sort of how he's lived and grown up around all of this. And it's a very, even though it's fiction, like a very stark um, commentary on, right, The like talk about other worlds, mm-hmm. like other worlds that might be like, you know, our back door or right down the street from us or a couple hours away. Um, so it was just really well done. And I, as I was listening to it, and I was listening to it because I, I would do it when I would mow the lawn or out on a run or something. Um, you know, trying to see, like, are we, is she sort of crossing the line into, like, stereotyping here? But um, just, like, a really nuanced, authentic portrayal of lots of different people, particularly around this one boy um, and sort of what he has experienced. As, like, there is a, a 10-year-old. Like, he's 10 or 11 in this book. And some of the things that he's experienced and um, how that might be true and indicative of anyone in, in our country alone, where we might think that, that doesn't happen here, but uh, again, just sort of a, a stark portrayal of what institutional poverty could look like here in the United States, not mm-hmm. Victorian England. Mm-hmm. Wow. Nice. Yeah. So I'd recommend it. It's long, but it was. It, but it was. It was good. I think I gave it four out of five stars. Okay. All right. I love Barbara Kingsolver. <laughs> oh, you do? She's one of my favorites. Yeah. What's... We read a lot of her in high school. Get actually. out. See. Did you do Poison did Wood Bible? The Poison Wood Bible. I've never read that the one. The Bean Trees. Okay. She's got a lot of good ones. Yeah, so this is her latest. So I would definitely, if you like her, I've never read anything else by her before, but um, it was it was good. It was well done. Yeah. So, check so it out. Um, reading is important, and reading is a way of learning about life. Yeah. And uh, one of my favorite courses ever was theology and literature, oh. learning theology through mm. novels. You didn't tell me you took that class. <laughs> yeah, I did. That sounds great. You have, what, what, do you remember anything? you remember yeah, what you read? yeah. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember it really helped to come to know God more fully. But we want to thank you for appearing with us, and um, and hopefully you'll come back again sometime. I would love it. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And we it. want everyone out there to know we, we love, love you. you.